All right? So CAV star is diffusion, I'm sorry, is convective flux for A in mole basis. So you have three terms as well. Earlier, you have rho A V A, you have rho A V, and then you have rho V. What is this one? What is this one? It's supposed to be combined flux of A represented by Na. This one is convective flux of A. Okay? This should equal to summation of A9. If you convert it into molar basis, you convert rho A into CA, you change the VA here is, is not changed, remains the same. So therefore, CAVA should equal to combined flux of A in molar basis. Uh, here, we use capital N, right? For convective flux, we use CA times average velocity. But in this case, average velocity is V star. So CA V star would be convective flux of A in molar basis. And then you have combined or total concentration multiplied by average velocity. That should equal to summation of combined flux. So taking this relationship back to this board, if you rearrange the equation here, you can get capital J A star equal to capital N A subtracted by C A V star. Okay. And then V star should equal to summation of Ni over concentration here according to this relationship. If you take C down here, you get that relationship. To end up with Na, Ca over C, summation capital Ni, which is XA. Writing for binary, you can have JA star equal to NA minus XA, NA plus NB. Or convert it, rearrange the equation. Once again, this term can also be thought of as convective flux of A. Molar basis into shear balance. You have input and output. And then you can convert the flux into what you want to measure like if you want to convert um, momentum flux into velocity, you can use Newton law. If you convert combined energy flux to temperature, you use Fourier law, right? In here, if you want to convert combined mass flux into what you can measure, which is concentration, then you will use fixed law. So 
take this into shear balance and then convert this or this part into fixed law, you can get concentration. You integrate it, you get concentration profile. Same thing. The difficulties come from this notation. You should see that in this equation, the combined flux here is the one that you want to put into balance. However, this one is function of B. So instead of using, there's two complications in this equation. First of all, there are Na in both sides. You need to regroup Na first. Second difficulties come from NB. You need to know NB before you can rearrange NA. Okay? And there are several ways to do it. We will, we will show you by using example. All right? Now, before we dismiss the class, um, when we study momentum balance or momentum transport, our system is pure species, isothermal. When we study the energy balance, the system turns into non-isothermal because temperature change within the system. But still, we consider single component, right? When you talk about mass balance or mass transport, now our system turns to be binary or more than one species. But at this stage, we still consider it isothermal. Okay? The point is, whenever you have two species or more than two species in your system, that is always has mass transport. Do you understand the question? So people would sometimes, students may be confused. Students may say that every time you have more than one species, you should have mass transport, which is not true, which is wrong. You should have mass transport whenever you have two points, at least two points in your system where concentration difference. Okay? Concentration will be different only when you have more than one species, right? If you have one single species, concentration everywhere is supposed to be uniform. If you have more than one species, then there will be a chance that two different points would have different concentration. However, there will be a case where you have two species in your system, but concentration in the system are uniform. Just like air here. You have oxygen, you have nitrogen, but nitrogen concentration or oxygen concentration are equal everywhere. In that case, there will be no mass transport. Okay? So don't be confused. You're looking for difference in concentration, not number of species. However, the number of species makes the problem difficult. All right? So we finish chapter 17. Next is chapter 18, but I don't think I'm going to start because it would require giving you example. So let's keep chapter 18 until next time, okay? So good luck in your examination. Don't be panicked.